Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Anar and I'm a self-taught software developer. And on this channel, I help you break into and grow in the tech industry. Today, I'm going to talk about how I became a software engineer without a computer science degree and without any experience. Before I get into that though, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so you don't miss any of my future content. My education and experience was so irrelevant to software engineering that my human resources degree is still a conversation starter in software engineering interviews. The reason I mention that is to show you that it doesn't matter what your education and experience are in, with myself as an example, going from human resources to software engineering. There were a few steps I had to take to get my first software engineering job, so I'll start there. I started my career in technology as a software tester or quality assurance professional. Initially, the reason I thought about getting into technology was because when I worked as a recruiter, I noticed that the salaries for technology professionals were pretty high. I never considered software engineering as an option because I was never comfortable with programming. I didn't consider programming as an option, but I thought there may be some non-programming IT jobs that would be worth exploring. The reason behind this thinking is because I was always pretty comfortable with computers, but programming was something I never tried and I just assumed was going to be very difficult. I boiled it down to a few different options. I distinctly remember system admin and quality assurance. I ended up choosing QA and my plan was to get into QA and grow in QA. Maybe down the road, I would become a performance tester or a security tester. I didn't really know at the time. Before I secured my first QA job, I took some classes, which covered some tools commonly used for QA and a little bit of programming. I also took programming classes, which covered basic fundamentals like variables and loops. I wanted to get some basic knowledge just to be more well-rounded, but I didn't get deep into programming because I wasn't planning to become a software engineer. My plan to grow in QA started to change when I got my first QA job and started dabbling with QA automation. QA automation work involves light, simple programming to write scripts that can QA test your application automatically. It's very basic and simple programming compared to something that a software engineer works with, which was perfect for somebody new to programming like myself at the time. Writing QA automation code was difficult and discouraging at first, just like writing any code. I often got stuck, but one benefit I had was that I worked with software developers, which meant I could ask for help. In retrospect, I think it might be more beneficial if you're in that situation to work in the office as opposed to working remote. This is generally how it goes with writing code. In the beginning, it's very difficult to do things independently, but the more skilled you get, the less help you need and the more you can do on your own. At this point, I noticed that my favorite part of my QA job was QA automation, or in other words, programming. So I started to think about moving into software engineering because software engineers write code more than anybody else. I knew that software engineers used web technologies and that was something I had no experience or knowledge in. So that was something I needed to ramp up on. I used to have a one hour train ride to and from work. And on this train ride, I started dabbling with JavaScript and building my first web application. Similar to when I worked on my test automation, I asked for help from coworkers when I got stuck configuring stuff or when I had coding problems I couldn't solve. When deciding which technologies to use for my first web application, I consulted my colleagues, which were experienced software developers, and ended up choosing a Node.js application, which interacted with a MySQL database and served views. I wanted to use React, but my coworkers explained to me that having a separate front-end framework is going to be a lot more work. You may have noticed that having experienced developers or really anybody to point me in the right direction really helped me learn to code. This is why I often recommend one-on-one -on -one classes or tutoring so that somebody is there that can point you in the right direction when you get stuck or when you have to make a decision. So as I mentioned, my first web application was a simple Node.js application that served views and choosing the simple setup allowed me to build features for it more quickly. While working on this application, I spoke to my direct manager and I expressed my interest in becoming a software engineer. Being a reasonable and experienced manager, he understood that if I didn't have this opportunity at my current company, I would look for it at another company. Around the time my little web application had enough features and was presentable, I showed it to my direct manager and he committed to a plan to move me from QA to software engineering. That's the story in a nutshell. I made a lot of mistakes along the way, but all of that goes in the rear view mirror as the years go on. I'm going to wrap it up here. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section and I'll see you in the next one.